Welcome to another show of Celebrate Life. My name is Gary DeCarlis, and I am your host. The focus of this program is to show the amazing lives people live and are living. The key word here is live. Everyone has a story to tell, and all stories are worth celebrating. Over the years, I've read too many obituaries that left me pondering, I wish I could have met this person while they were alive. The goal of this program is to celebrate the lives of everyday Vermonters who are all very much alive. If you would like to be interviewed on a future show or know someone who you think would like to be interviewed, please contact me at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com. Now, I'd like to introduce you to today's guest, Michael Johnson. Good morning, Michael. Welcome to the show. Oh, good morning, Gary. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, we're here to celebrate your life. Um, <laughs> where would you like to begin? Where did it begin? Well, I, I'm I'm a. I grew up here in Springfield, Vermont, and this is I, I'm a Vermonter, and uh, I grew up here in this town. I was raised here, and uh, you know. Did, did some travels and things in between throughout life and I ended up back here. So, you know, and, uh, it's been, but it's been a very interesting journey, you know, and, mm. you know, not where I ended, thought I'd end up, you know, when right. I started out. So, well, well we're, we're going to cover all that. I hope yeah. in the next hour. So yeah. what was like, what was life like for you in the beginning here in Springfield? That, that city has gone through a lot for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, I would, came from a, uh, my dad worked in the machine tool industry here when it was booming, but oh, yeah. you know, he was here in the beginning of it, and he worked for like 45 years or 40 something years in a uh, fellow's gear shaper. So we were, I would say we were uh, average to uh, lower class pay mm -hmm. at the time in the beginning of their, you know, he was young and, you know, and uh I know that uh, we grew up, my, my parents had an apartment just down the street from where my center is here. And mm. uh, and then uh, mm. after a few years of being in the shop and they built the house, they had the house built where we my uh, family still has the house there now. Mm. And uh, so, and I also remember growing up, you know, living living in a in a in a in a way of that you know like one of our favorite meals that we had was macaroni with uh uh what do you call it stewed tomatoes because we didn't have tomato sauce you know and uh you know we we didn't live we were lived kind of poorly you know and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but hard work and and learning to you know, make do, we learn to do as, as a young person. And, mm. you know, and one of the things my dad always taught me is, you know, if you want something, you have to earn it. Mm -hmm. You have to work for it, you know? Mm. And uh, so he was a big influence in my life as a, as a young child and growing up and some of those things. Mm. It was, uh, but that always stayed with me, you know? Yeah. You know? <clears throat> and uh, so... What did, did you and your dad do some things together that are special for you? Yeah, I, I had an old older brother and uh and Gary, he's two years older than me. And uh but we did a lot of, you know, camping and uh, outdoorsy things because you know, my dad was a uh, from Finland, you know, and uh wow. well his family was he was born <clears throat> in this country, but my grandparents mm -hmm. were from Finland and but uh we did a lot of camping and fishing and all those things. You know, some of the best memories of my life were when we were small, going to different state parks, and we—that you know, was our summer vacation. We'd go for a couple mm. weeks and we'd just camp. You know, my brother and I'd be fishing. They we all day, every day. You know, and all day long. It would be pouring out. We didn't care. But you know, I, to, I still love fishing to this day. You know, and uh, but he taught us how to survive living in also living how to do day-to-day -day things make fires and you know a lot mm. of other things so that that was a really something i always cherish is some of those camps 
sight memories that we have, you know, and yeah. wood yeah. carving and, uh, you know, and yeah, learning to split wood, you know, and, you know, and it, but we, you had to get your hands dirty, you know, and uh, yeah. we yeah. really, but we were, we were good at that all together, mm. you know, so mm. that really meant a lot to me. Absolutely. You know, a lot of old school uh, raising. My dad came from a big family, so, you know, they mm -hmm. had like 16 kids in their family and, you know, the grandfather had died. And so what they, they, they had a lot of respect and, you know, and, and you, you respected your elders and, and you did, you all worked hard to make something happen and everybody, you had your duties to do and you did them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone so, was. It, yeah. 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 But, uh, you know, a lot of love there too, though, you know, <laughs> you know, so, mm -hmm. you know sounds like it. Yeah, it was. It, yeah. Did did the machine tool industry bring your father to Springfield? I mean, <clears throat> or did he see that as the place to go for work? Yeah, uh, yeah. you know, and uh, they, they they came and he started he started out you know at a entry level type stuff you know and uh, but he, he he worked his way up in the shops and learned and you learn you have to learn on the go you know you mm -hmm. got to be willing to learn and. Uh, <laughs> But it was booming here at one time. Then things got better, you know, life yeah. got better for everybody. And yeah, you know, this town was a booming town at one time, you know. Absolutely. It you sure know? was. Yeah. Some different than today. <laughs> yeah, some different than today. Now, yeah. your mother, was she a good cook? Yeah, she was. Yeah. She was a farm girl, you know. Mm -hmm. and she had a big family too of eleven, you know, and wow. uh and uh they all lived on the farm here in town and uh they were Springfielders and, and, uh, yeah. And you know, it's, uh, I remember going to the farmhouse it, it, and it, everybody was always there. And, you know, my grandmother would be in there and my grandfather used to always play cards with us. He cheated a lot, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, but, but we had a good time and, and, you know, hard nosed people though. I mean, you know, mm. you know, there's chores and things to do and expectations, but it didn't hurt anybody. Right. You know, you know what I mean? Right. It's, it, you know, if you right. wanted to, you wanted to eat, you had to get things done first. Right. You know? Right. And, you right. Know, so, yeah. So the combination, so my dad met my mom and they got married and then met, they went from there, you know, so we we're That's always great. connected to the family. So the big, yeah. ones, you know, so <laughs> Yeah, an extended family. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. Um, When you were a little boy, did you have, um, what did you think you were going to do when you grew up? Did you have career fantasies? When I was real little, no, I, I I wanted to be all kinds of things, you know, you know, and, you know, I know one of, one of the things we talk about, who were my heroes and stuff, but, you know, mm -hmm. it was just post-World War II, you know, you know, the early 50s and and you know there's a lot of movies as to like you know and you know all the we my dad used to love to watch the the war movies and and those kind of things and a lot of the heroes of the, in my life were those people that we watched you know the john right. Wayne's and and all those right. you know gi movies and the longest day and you know yep. all those yep. things and yeah those are people that made our country strong. And, and but what another one of my heroes too, I because I remember when it happened, uh, I was I don't remember what grade, but when uh John Kennedy got killed, the mm. school was closed and our school was across the street from my house. Mm. You know, my first four grades were in a one room schoolhouse, one building with four right. rooms. <laughs> Small, right. You know. And uh and I remember the day it happened and we they mm. sent us home, you know, and we were all watching the television, but I was pretty Im impressed by Kennedy over the years, just, you know, yeah. But his speech, his speeches and how it, wh what he thought of our country and, and, and the strength of our country, you know, mm -hmm. ask mm -hmm. not what you, you know, and that, yeah. whole, that whole piece always stuck with me, you know, mm -hmm. what can I do for you? Right. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. You know, and it's a shorter day too, you know. Yeah. And it, it fits in with your family's kind of family motto of, um, you know, hard work will get you what you need to get in life. And yeah, um, and yeah, and giving is a big part of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so so then you went to school as a little boy. Yep. And yeah. And uh, 
Yeah, I well, I went to you know we had the first four grades were in this. It's now the community players building, but it was uh, and then and our the, the teachers were wonderful. It was a small school, and mm -hmm. uh, and in the town there was little little schools all out throughout the neighborhoods because mm -hmm. there's a lot of neighborhoods because of the shops and the you know some low income housing some and then other housing developments grew after that and so we all had our like little neighborhood groups of kids you know and yeah, yeah. and we'd be on ball teams and stuff and in the summer we used to go to other parts of the town and play ball against each other right and we all yeah. knew each other but it was like you know it was westview against southview and you know mm -hmm. in, in north springfield and you know and elm hill and, and and it was and it was it was really a close uh community you know Sounds like that. you know everybody knew everybody but there's a lot of people then you know yeah yeah the town has actually shrunk so you know yeah. in size but it was it was different walking to school you know you know mm. we had buses but i chose to walk and it was like you know a mile away but we'd walk in the morning we didn't care you know right right you know? what did you play on those baseball teams well I, my, when i was younger i played baseball you know because that was the summer sport that they had but yeah when i got a little older you know i did uh basketball which was my favorite and, and ran track you know and uh and yeah. in high school and and played football too but you know mm -hmm. and we were a division one team at that time we we're like the div division wow. four. we're division four now so you know so things have changed you know and yeah and uh but still a lot of uh cosmos here in springfield the springfield cosmos and it, it, we have a lot of pride in that back then mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Of course, I grew up in a time with the uh, crossing from tradition into the the late 60s into the early 70s. So, you know, right. it was we had dress codes when I went to start at high school. And I think it's my class that changed everything because <laughs> cause we had a sit in in the auditorium. So we had to so we could wear jeans and bell bottoms and tie dye right. shirts, you know, right. And it ended up changing. So it's my fault things went to pieces, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but you know, I mean, was, that was that phase, you know? Yeah. So that was interesting. That's the 60s. Yeah. What, what was that like for you? The 60s were a major social shift for sure. Oh, yeah. One of the things that uh, in school, they, they took kids from every uh, grade uh, or, or scholarship level within mm -hmm. the school and we started uh what do you call it an open school and wow. and it was a it was a, a trial con con uh you know uh thing they were trying to see how it would work an open school process we mm -hmm. and we had uh we ended up going to a, a school that was not used anymore and we used that building so we had couches and chairs and you know and music playing and and you know and our studies were, you know, like I, I like history, you know, and uh, and I liked American Indians, you know, and mm -hmm. indigenous people. And so you could go in a direction that you wanted to follow. Oh, and, oh, that's and, nice. and we had teachers that would, you know, that were there. And I think one of them was an SDS member for the college, you know. Wow. <laughs> you know, so we're getting, <laughs> we got kind of got a little radical. But it, it, it was an interesting time, though, you know, and, you know, that's one, you know, a lot of the drug era started too, though, you know. Right, you know, for and, sure. You know, and right. it, there's plenty of it in those days as well. <laughs> you know, you oh, know, yeah. You know, and absolutely. You know, and that's kind of some of my things changed in life for me around then too, you know. Mm. You know, and, you how know. so, Michael? Well, you know, I never knew exactly where I fit in the school, you know, or in life, you know. I, I fit fit with the hippies, I fit with the jocks, and I fit with, you know, the upper class and the lower class, and and, and I had friends in, in all walks. I made friends everywhere because I didn't know where I belonged, you know? Hmm. It didn't matter to me. I, you know, I I I didn't, doesn't, I, I didn't look at anybody any different other than people wanted to be friends, but I didn't know where I fit. Right. You know? But that's, my, my music stuff kind of 
found a place for me at that point, you know, and it, it, I had been playing drums in the school and stuff like that. And I took piano lessons when I was really young. So I knew drums really like how to read music. And they started drums in fifth grade. And it was like, I can't wait for these guys to learn to read music. They kept moving me up and, uh, wow, you know, and, and I got a drum set and my neighbor had a band who was like four years older than me and their drummer wasn't there. I went in and sat in and, and they fired him and kept me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so my first nightclub gig was, I, I was in eighth grade. Right. So, uh -huh. you know, so I said, boy, I like this, you know, look at all the attention. Of course I was a young kid kid you know, you know all the older sure. girls like pick it on me and you know what i'm going this is great you know what a <laughs> career you know and uh yeah so did you um did you play in the high school band as well i did for a while but i i, I was too i rather play sports so you know yeah and, yeah, and, yeah yeah and and my music taste changed you know as a drummer you know it's you know sure. rock and roll was like you know i remember Remember in fourth grade, a bunch of us were the Beatles. We were running around singing their songs in the, on the playground, right? So <laughs> that was pretty funny. But anyway, yeah, it was it was an interesting time, you know. And uh, mm. I don't regret any of it, though. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I had a good childhood. I, we're active. And we did a lot of stuff, and you know, the young we did a lot of crazy stuff as young people, but we didn't hurt anybody, and no one got right. Hurt, you know, right, so, right, you know. and I. If I'm not mistaken, there's uh, Boy Scouts was in your oh yeah repertoire too, and I fit that in there too. It's right. Well, it, one of like, you're talking about childhood heroes. Some of mine were my first Cub Scout master mm -hmm. was was uh, uh, Howard Sprague. Used to run a lo local store here down the street, South South View Market, right? And then mm -hmm. and then uh, and then. Uh, no, that was Charlie Johnson. Howard Sprague ran the Boy Scouts, and then I joined the Boy Scouts. And that was a being camping and hiking and and all those things. It was in nature. It was all up my alley. I really loved right. that stuff. And uh, you know, I I worked hard at it. My brother was in it too. And you know, I know you had a person on earlier that talked about his scouting career, and and it's like, and and that mine was. Pretty great. I, I spent some summers as counselors, you know, at mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lake Sunrise and Camp Plymouth when I was older in scouts. And uh, and I got to go to uh, the Philmont Scout Ranch out in New Mexico. Wow. And uh, a busload of us went and they put us all on a bus and some Vermonters and some Massachusetts kids. And we it's like they call us hillbillies and you know we, we call them city slickers and you know <laughs> but by the time we get done the trip we were all friends so it was all good but you know and uh you know it was i worked hard at that because my brother wanted it in his in it one of his uh classmates we're going to be eagle scouts and it's like i was bound and determined to do it at the same time as them and i did i was 16 at the time wow the end of my 16th year but I, wow. I did it before I was 17 and they were 18. So and I wow. worked hard to do that. And, you know, and, uh, but I do remember all the things that taught us about teamwork, mm. building and uh, supporting others and, and making sure that your, your group was okay. Cause when we were in New Mexico, I was one of the older guys and, and we had all these people out in the mountains for like three weeks, hiking the Rockies out there, you know, and, uh, wow the trails and it's like you got maps and you got your food and you got the ranger stations you had to get to and mm -hmm. you know, yeah but you worked you had to get people to work together so that that was really important to me right so that's something that stuck with me is it's how you treat yeah. people you can get things done and you have to be able to work with people differently exactly. they're all different <laughs> yeah exactly so so uh do you remember what your did you have like a a project that you had to do to become an Eagle Scout, a final. Yeah, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, to be honest, with you, it's, it's fair seems, enough. It seems so long ago now, dude. Yeah, but you know, so you had a lot of a very uh, eclectic early life. I yeah, mean, music I did. And sports and, um, and hot cars. <laughs> and hot cars too. Okay, there you go. <laughs> you know, yeah. Did, did that? Um, 
did that after you graduated high school did that present a, a like where do i go from here which part of me do i pursue well, and yes and no I, I had a scholarship to go to new england school of art and and but i put off to going you know if, and, and but i was drumming a lot then too mm -hmm. and so and I, music became what i wanted to do a lot of things were happening and and uh so i ended up moving to boston with a guitar player friend and and uh we drove down and found a studio apartment and we said, we'll take it. And it was in the basement in Kenmore Square and uh, in the back in the back alley. And we packed up a truck and we drove down there with a, whatever we could get in it and threw it in there. And we said, we're going to make it here. And <laughs> and and then then that's where my life changed there because, musically, because that, that's the direction I ended up going. Mm. We pursued music and we were in cover bands for a number of years and then, uh, you know, and finding the right people. And then we ended up narrowing it down to three of us, a keyboard player and a guitar player and myself. And because we wanted to do original music and, and mm. we made, made a lot of friends down there. And uh, so we were rehearsing, working on stuff and Rick Ocasek of the cars was down the hall and we knew David the drummer and his his younger brother was a friend of ours and all that stuff and wow and uh he wanted to produce our a single for us and so he did a, he produced our first single wow. and um you know and uh and then we went in, into the car studio and did an ep you know an extended play and with that we did a video which they uh, the record company at the time did, did a video with us for us and we that was on mtv too for quite a wow. while wow look at you yeah and then we get an opportunity to go and we got their management to manage us and then we we did some touring and we actually our first big thing is we opened for the cars at boston garden and it was like i remember that night like the back of my hand my heart was pounding so hard because <laughs> you can't see all the people because of the lights. But right. I knew they were out there, right? You know? Wow. <laughs> Scared wow. the living bejesus out of me, you know? So that's like, how many people go into the Boston car? That's that's a lot. That's thousands. Yeah. And so, right. I got, you know, so we did that, you know, and that, you know, that leads to my journey of my, my today. But, you know. Things were going pretty good, and we we got to go to do all play the clubs in L.A. We got flown out there and, wow. and, and met all kinds of people. And I met a lot of, you know, like Neil Young and a bunch of other people, mm. you know, that would come into the studio. And we met Neil Young and Paul Simon in in, in California. I was, you know, we right. met and we met. Uh, we played in New York City and Philadelphia, and you know, and it was Jeez. it was it was a great time in my life, but. You know, for me, I have addictive tendencies. So, you know, I'm thinking, what a great life. They pay me money. I get to do all this stuff and I get to party all the time. Mm. Well, that isn't how it is. Right. You're going to be successful. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, cocaine was huge back then. Yeah. It became a became an issue for me, you know. Sure. And, sure. And, and then... Things fell apart. Record companies didn't want someone like that. So right. my best friend and I parted ways. Wow. Know? Yeah. And, um, I floundered right after that. I had a, I really struggled. And it was. Mm. And so I got on a bus and moved back to Vermont. Mm. You know, and uh, head mm. between my leg, legs, you know, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, that was a, a dark times. But, you know, I try I tried to find things different, you know, and. Uh, what did you learn from that, Michael? What 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 was the? Well, I, I blamed everybody else, you know. For yeah. The longest time, but right, it was me, you know. Yeah. And uh, I came back to Vermont, and then then I ended up looking for uh, a better way of life. You know, I had a few relationships and I had some jobs in some local companies here, and you know, you know, and I, you know, I end up messing those up too because i didn't show up because i was out drinking and hanging out all night i moved to vermont the cocaine was terrible so i didn't 
do that anymore, but I still drank like I was mm. so instead of being a wide awake drunk, I was just a drunk, you right. know, right. But my life, but my life changed. Yeah. You know, uh, I met some, some, I always had faith in my life, but my, my parents didn't go to church, but I did, you know, mm. and, uh, and then there's some folks that had a yeah young Christians group out in New York. So I thought I'd go out there and try something different. You know, and, and hmm. I, so I moved out to New York and stayed with these folks out there. And, you know, it, it was, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, evangelistic style. Uh, okay. Yeah. You no, know, and, uh, you know, dancing in the aisles, banging tambourines. And, and it was up, but it, there were great people, but it, it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. You know? But I was working construction, and and then I got a job doing that, and I liked it because I was in good shape for a change, you know, you know, you know. And I still struggle with drinking and stuff, but you know, at some point my life totally changed because there's this lady fishing in the Hudson River. We were by at the edge of the river with all the guys, and uh, after work, and I said, "Look, her line's tangled. Someone ought to go help her." Well, that was me. So, <laughs> and my wife says, if I ever want to meet someone, go fishing, you know, <laughs> friends. and I met this beautiful young girl who was fishing. She was just getting out of work. And, uh, and that's my wife of today. And, oh, that's great. Uh, and I, I remember the family values that I was missing. Mm. I wanted to be a dad. I wanted to have a wife. I wanted to have a home. I didn't mm -hmm. know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I know that's what I wanted. And so our paths kept running into each other. And then we, we had, I, she was struggling. She had three jobs. They said, well, you get daycare. She had a, she had a son. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and she, they said, you get, you could have daycare if you, if you quit your jobs. What, you know, and she says, I'm working three jobs. I'm not, she said, I'm not quitting anything. Right. In, in order for her to have, I had her move in with me. So we, she could save some money, and that's when I started meeting my my stepson. You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, mm -hmm. my, and you know, I've been with him since he's three. So I'm dad to him. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, he's a great kid. Yeah, and uh, uh -huh. so and we ended up doing a lot, and and you know, and uh, one thing led to another. She worked for the uh, the VA and uh, out in Castle Point, and came up to visit my parents. And she put an application in up here because they had openings or whatever. Figured it never here, you know. All right. We were back a week or so, and they had an opening in White River. So, and so we packed up and from our apartment in Beacon, New York, and moved and crashed in my parents' house, and and then we found an apartment down the street on just off from where I grew up, and that's where I still live. Wow. We wow. rented the upstairs apartment. The guy downstairs was was in the EA program, and uh, so I got back introduced to getting support and help. And, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I, it was still a struggle for a number of years. But life, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, but today, you know, I I didn't choose this path. You know, you know, someone bigger than me. You know, and uh, yeah, God's a big part of my life today, and that got me to where I am. But that was really mm. important to me, mm. uh, you know, and, uh, you know, so I found sobriety and I worked sobriety. Then I started working for mental health services. It's my first job back when I got back. I was driving a van, taking people to AA meetings, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and it was right behind our house, a couple of streets Un back. Unbelievable. You know? So my first, my first uh, sponsor when I got back worked there. You know, so he was a late act and, and uh, so and we we hung out together. And so that started my journey in, in human services. Wow. Uh, so it's uh, yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, you don't well, know, you know. Right. Right. So I, I you would obviously attribute a lot of your where you are today to your faith. For sure. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And. um and how did you how did that 
transformation happened from, you know, alcohol and cocaine really ruling your life to when you did, when you said this, I'm in, I'm, I'm going to be sober now. Well, right? I, I struggled when I first met Kathy and, and, and then we, but I, what I really wanted to have happen is my life to change. Right. And, and, you know, I want, we we tried different churches, you know. Mm -hmm. She was raised Catholic, and and, mm -hmm. and and uh, but we she went with me to other things, mm -hmm. you know. And then we were married by a judge in New York at ten o'clock in the morning, and he was three sheets to the wind at the time too. <laughs> and it was like, yo, here's a good start, right? <laughs> so we got back to Vermont, and and, and when we were up here. And I started going to mass with Kathy at church. And, and you know, I always looked for the right church. And, and and then I took the classes and so we could get remarried in the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. So and, nice. and and so we've done we did that and, and we've celebrated a couple of anniversaries. We got we've had renewed our vows like three times, yeah, you know, because That's it's wonderful. important to us. Yes. And and uh so, and and as it was something I found in that church in the community there that's like home to me, and mm -hmm. that's where I belong. And you know, mm -hmm. and I, I don't care who who find finds God in their lives, but it, that changed my recovery. Yeah, yeah, you know? and uh, it it really did, and, and yeah. it strengthened it, and it gave me a direction I didn't have. Yes. You know? It sounds like um, that there, you know, you in in your heart, you always wanted to get to that place of where you are today, and the combination of meeting Kathy and finding your faith home really allowed all that to come together in a way that yeah uh, that you needed yeah. I mean, even even my job careers, you know, I worked almost nineteen years in mental health. I still struggled, you know. You know, sure. I put eight years together and I that something would happen. And, and yeah. I had another 10 years to, of sobriety. And, and uh, I was playing in a band part time, you know, and but I thought I knew all there was about recovery because I had a lot like the time. Right. And, the disease sits, sits on your shoulder and says, I can't wait when you're not paying attention. And we were at this club and and someone bought rounds. And it's like everybody knew I didn't drink, but no one paid attention when I did. Right. You know, right, right. I got a DUI coming back, mm. you know, and, and from the gig. Right. And mm. uh, so I I worked a year without a license. But I worked with my clients, I, you know, I, I worked with people with severe mental illness. And and but I taught them to take the bus instead of me driving them. I took mm -hmm. it, how to go shopping and how to get to come to the office. I rode the bus with them. And we did, yeah. and I did my job even better. Actually, I was helping him more than I thought, you know, by what I was yeah, doing. teaching and, him some important skills. Yeah, yeah. And when my court date was finalized, I was let go because I was didn't have the qualifications for my job. What? Yeah, and, and so so you know, and, and I I was I was I was angry for the longest time about, mm -hmm. and, I, and it's like I and. And I, you know, it's like, okay, you know, what do I do now? So someone gave me a chance and to work with kids at, at, at the school. So another door opened, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I learned to work with kids and youth and kids that are struggling with families with addiction and, and stuff like that. And I was coming to the turning point here anyway, right? And uh, for meetings and stuff and so I started coming here and it was a transition here with the director at the time. And, and so I was using them one of the rooms here. And, uh, and then they said, well, once I put a classroom in here and the kids guys would meet me here. Oh, wow. And so we had computers, they would do their work and, you know, the, the attention span was maybe 20 minutes at a time with them. And yeah. I learned to work with them though, and we did a lot of great things. And we'd go fishing and we'd go hiking and and then and if you can get this done, we'll go and play basketball and you know, and you know, it may have taken five years to graduate someone from high school. 
but they mm-hmm. graduated, you know, and, uh, and I was helping out here for a while, you know, and, uh, but we had an interim director here, so I was helping her and, and I'd open the morning cause she'd come in late and, you know, later and I'd close and, and I started doing things and helping in the office and, and then I joined the board here huh? and, and, uh, you know, and then just trying to be part of this community. And I, I liked it. And, yeah. and and then they were looking for someone. And one of the board members says, why don't you throw your hat in the ring? So I didn't pick all these things to happen to me to get to here. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. Exactly. <laughs> I just followed the path that was put in front of me. Right. And so I did. And I did the interview. And I was left the interview. and was heading home. My phone rang said, where are you going? We got cake and ice cream here. So they wanted to celebrate with me. They already had knew they wanted me. So. Oh, that's so, wonderful. And I've been here ever since. So, Michael, tell the audience what, what the turning point of Springfield is. They well, might not. We're, 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 we're a recovery center, which means that we're a place for people for uh, struggling with substance use or misuse at that any point in their life, before, during, or after, if they're struggling, they need support of any kind, we're here to help them find a path that works for them. And it's all paths to recovery. We have lots of resources. We have a transition house, you know, where people could live up to almost two years here. They learned how to get on their feet and go back to work and be part of the community. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we try to reach people in all ways. When I first started, this was an AA meeting house, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it, and it's much more than that now, mm-hmm. you know, and being able to reach people in the community at their worst points, at, like in the emergency room of the hospitals, we're working two hospitals 24 hours a day, or at the police station when someone gets arrested, mm-hmm. or at the prison. We meet with folks and that we have, we're in the presence and, and everything, anywhere, way we can meet with folks, you know, and then it's not just the people that are struggling, it's their families. Right. You, meet, it, you know, it, right. the family disease, because it affects yeah. everybody and, right. and even with youth. So we work yeah. with youth and we work with families and we try to reach everybody. This It's a devastating disease, but one thing people don't talk about which we see a lot of is the successes. Right. I am so grateful for most of my staff I've watched come here, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're, it's a big part of my team and I'm grateful to be, you know, at the helm. And it's like the success of this place isn't because of me. It's because of all the great people that work for me. Mm -hmm. And I, I I love and cherish all of them. I really do. And it's like, only because they understand and their peers, they under they know what it's like that the struggles to have. And you watch someone blossom in recovery, the fact that they can give so much back and with gratitude, but they also understand how someone feels, you know? Right. You know, right. You don't exactly. know how I feel. Yeah, yes, I do. And yeah. you know, it's like maybe not exact circumstances, but boy, I right. can you know, I I can yeah. relate. I I can relate to that pain. Yes, the loneliness, yeah. those pieces. But there is hope. Our yeah. job is to give people hope. Well, you're a living example of that yourself, yeah. Michael. Well, thank it, you, Gary. Absolutely. Do you, um, when you think of musicians and addiction, do you have any? Have you done anything to help support other musicians that might have gone through the same thing you went through? I really haven't played that much anymore, you know, but, and it, well, no, I haven't really. I mean, and uh-huh. I, I do some writing on the side, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. you know, I, and I do events, you know, it, well, so we used to rock for recovery once a year to celebrate mm-hmm. recovery month and yeah. a bunch of guys of us would get together and play. And, but, but there are people in like uh, that we do, associate with is like you know from divided sky trey anastasia who's a mm-hmm. guitar player for fish right and, right and there's a lot of famous people out there that are in recovery you know right you know right. and uh you know <clears throat> it people do recover 
Yeah. You know, and, and it's not an easy journey. It's yeah. not. And people, you know, it's like, you know, you go to treatment, and you're done. Well, that's not it. It's a life right. change. It's a way of life. And it's right. in recovery, you know, I'm grateful for every moment that I have. I right. get up, I got up today and I'm sober again. Thank God, you know, and, yeah. uh, and yeah. I've got tomorrow. I can't worry about that yet. You know? All right. Exactly. Well, and that's the thing that I think you, you, you've talked about this, but it's not something like you say, you go to a treatment program and it's over. You're, you're in recovery. It's an everyday uh, focus on staying where you're at to have another day that you're sober and alive and, well, uh, the big, yeah, the biggest piece of a recovery center is that people learn to have connections because you have to find like people that that you can have to call or, or mm -hmm. trust. You know, I know that <clears> for me, <throat> when I wasn't part of this or part of the center, if, you know, you broke down side of the road, you try to call some of your old friends. You know, not many is going to show up, you know, it's right. like, you know, it, right. but I can if, if I needed help, I got 25 people to show up, you know? Yeah, yeah. And we, and we would show up for each other at any point, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and, but you have someone who, who your friendships are more, are stronger, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of the best friends in the world because of recovery. Exactly. You know, some of the directors, and you yourself, sir, you know, it's like, you know, I remember when we first met, the first director's meeting I went to, you know, that's a long time ago. You mm -hmm. know, and it's like, mm -hmm. You know, we, it's not easy, but, you know, you we have th something in common, all of us. Absolutely. You know? and, How many years have you been a director now? Since there? 2013. Okay, 11 uh, years. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, best job I ever had. I get up every day and I, I can still say I love my job. You know? Yeah. Despite the, the good and the bad, you know. Mm -hmm. We've had people die. I've had staff die. <clears throat> You know, we yeah. you know, I, and we've lost a lot of people over the last five or six years because of the opioid ep epidemic, you know, and right. And it's really sad and, and heartache. But part of it is we we have control of what we do. We can support people the best we can. And we're not responsible for their decisions, but we're but we want to give them every opportunity to make a good decision. But that is by giving them hope that there's a better right. answer. Right. And God right. gives you hope, right? You know, yep. there's yep. a lot of hope in God, you know, and, and, you know, you know, and uh, one, of, one of the biggest things from my faith, I just want to share is father Peter, who's Pat just passed away a year this past year. He was, uh, I was told him I, I have, I'm struggling with giving it up to God, you know, the obsession of, you know, and, and he says, well, why don't you go in the chapel every day and, and practice giving it to him? And he's, and he says, you know, you got to mean it when you give it to him. You can't keep a piece for yourself for later. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and we all do that, you know, over the years. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and I did that, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, and when you truly give it to him, he, if you give it to him, he'll take it, but you yeah. have to really let go, you know, yeah. you yes. know, and, and it's like, and you have to believe that it's going to happen. Yes. And I do today <laughs> because it happened. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes. So, yes. You know, and, and that strengthens my faith too, mm. you know, because I was always sitting there, you know, well, that looks like I wish I could have that, you know, because all these mm. they didn't have all these specialty beers when I was out there, you know. Mm. <laughs> you know, it was like you know, what what that's like, you know. It's like I don't really care. Yeah. It's not for me. Uh, you so, yeah. <laughs> you know? For you. Good for you. Yep. You know, and um the 12 steps saved my life. Faith has given me a life. So mm. so that that's how I look at it. Yeah, so I'm really grateful today, you know, this so absolutely. Yeah. It comes through loud and clear. Yeah. Well so yeah. So um where do you think about the future at all in terms of all this? Well, the future for me is like <clears throat> I have goals, I have goals I had set when I became director, you know, and and um and I still, you know 
I, I want to see recovery programs flourish in Vermont, you know, and then it's a, a taking on some more things and that I would have as just as, as a director and, and I don't want to see our community thrive again. And, yeah. and I'm trying to be part of that too. Yeah. Uh, with some committees and programs that we're doing project action and all those. And, and what, what for me is I also want to spend some time with my family yeah. and, 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 you know, my, I turned 70 this year and, you know, they had the surprise party for me at my center. And it's like, I don't know how my staff didn't tell me and my wife didn't tell me, but it, and the police chief and everybody else who kept it a secret from me, but everybody showed up, you know, and Man, people true. here from our community and other organizations and friends and family members. And it was like, it's probably the best birthday I've, I've mm -hmm. ever had only because <clears throat> I feel like I've actually got to a point where I actually accomplished something that, it's like all the other things that I've done that, you yeah. know, I thought were big things. Yeah. I was always looking to see who I am, right? Mm -hmm. I was that rock star or I was this. And it's like, I'm just Michael who's grateful to be in recovery. Look, mm -hmm. this wonderful, this world's giving me wonderful people. And mm -hmm. that, you know? Yes. And it was that, like, wow, you know, that's the yeah. best gift I could get, you know? That's, yep. Manna from heaven. Yeah. And I tell you, my, you know, the biggest gift for me is my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, she has been my rock. Good, mm -hmm. bad, indifferent. She she said a couple of things in my recovery travels. Mm -hmm. Like that made a big difference. One of the things she said is recovery is your responsibility. It's not mine. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I'd have, I got to go to a meeting tonight, but I can't drive. <laughs> right. It's like it's like she goes, well. I guess you're walking, right? It's like, you know, it's like, it's like, wait a minute, she's got it. But I, I'm so grateful for that because yes. it made me stronger. And, yes. And and it made us stronger, you know? Yes. You That's know? a beautiful so, line. Yeah. And and so, and, and I have beautiful... nothing but gratitude. Yeah. You know? Have you uh, any special recognitions or awards you've gotten, Michael, for all this work? Well, our one of the things that I, I'm grateful for is that we were that place at the end of the street nobody wanted to talk about when I first started. And last year we got organization of the year by the Chamber of Commerce. Wow. And uh, we're recognized at the table and we're asked to be part of everything in, in town. Wow. <laughs> it's not like, it, you know, and, and it's because people see the work we're doing. Right. You know, we're not hidden. Right. Anymore. They need us. Right. Peer recovery is huge, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, the solution isn't what just one thing or just that. They need us to make things happen. Yeah. The police chief said it the other day, something comes up and I'm, I'm calling on people, you know, to be, a, you know, responsible to show up. And he says, turning point always is the first one there. And it's, mm. it's because we care. So, mm. And I don't say the other folks don't, but we do right. because we know what it's like to be hurting. Exactly. You know. Exactly. And it's like what is yeah. what a statement for your organization, but for Springfield itself to say that the recovery center of Springfield is the is being recognized as the business of the year yeah. for the community. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean. You know, I didn't even know that either. They kept that from me too until that <laughs> dinner night. You know, my, my staff is good at keeping things from me, so I get to worry about that, right? But the other, the other piece is that I, I'm growing my staff, and 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 you know, I've got such talented people, you know, and I watch them grow. And you put people in positions that, you know, you don't know what their strengths are until you see them. Mm -hmm. But the, my goal is to, when I walk away from here nothing's going to change and it's only going to get better. Mm -hmm. And I have those folks here to do that now. I'm just not ready to go yet. <laughs> absolutely. You know, absolutely. You know? Yep. but, yep. but uh, that means we can build more. That means I can do other things to, uh, That's right. statewide and community wide to yes. help our community and people. You That's know? beautiful. So, yep. You know, you know, and um, like I said, I couldn't be more grateful than I am mm -hmm. today.
Well, listen, we're uh, getting close to the end of the interview. Is there anything that we haven't touched on that you would like to mention? Uh, any any uh, words of wisdom you'd like to share with the audience? <laughs> well, uh, I'm I'm trying to think of anything in particular. You know, it's one thing that, you know, I'm not responsible for everything that's happening out there, but I'm responsible for what I do, you know, yeah. and, and, and it, you can say someone needs to fix that. So what's your part in it? You know, mm -hmm. you know, and people want to see things change. It takes mm -hmm. a community to fix this. You mm -hmm. know? And I don't personally take things what other people say about me or about us or, or, or about anyone else. My job is not to judge people. Yeah. My my jo job is to ju meet people where they're at and help them the best I can. You know, and, and you know, what would Jesus do, right? <laughs> but you know, without going overboard, but it's like, you know, a kind kind word and a kind hand goes a long ways, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and sometimes you have to accept things the way they are at the moment, you know, because it is what it is. All right. You know. And what what happens with that is I'm responsible for what my next step is. Right. Right. And, yeah. you know, and, yeah. you know, we all yeah. have something to give to this community and into our, to our society together. If we work together. We could, this place could be great, you know, and, yeah. and, and changes need to be made, you know, and we need to do mm -hmm. things, you know, mm -hmm. so. And a lot of what you're saying, Michael, reminds me of what you said earlier with uh, John Kennedy's famous quote, yeah. um, rather than what can your country do for you, what can you do for your country? And it, right. it goes back to the individual, too, instead yep. of what can you do for me? The question is, what can I do for you? Right. Uh, yeah. It, to make yeah. have any success, you have to participate. Yeah. Right. My my dad always one of the things he always told me, nobody's gonna give you anything. You have to earn it. Yeah. You know, yep. and that goes yep. that goes with your sobriety too. Exactly. You yeah. have to work at it. No one's gonna hand you can't hand it to someone. You can't do it with medication, and say, Hey, you're all better. You can't do right. it. You yep. have to work at it because it is yep. a lifelong journey. Yep. So, yeah. That's I'm absolutely. glad I'm on this one because it I couldn't be happier with that, you know. So great. Well, thank you, Michael, very much. Appreciate yeah. the time. Uh, that And uh, it's great to celebrate your life uh, with you. Well, uh, thanks for having me and letting me share it, you know. And just for today, everybody, take care of yourselves, all right? There you go.